In this video, we want to show how to use the theory-based approach on the applet. So in this example, we want to investigate whether or not a candidate, Mr. Young, had more than 80% support from all registered voters. We collect a sample of 114 registered voters and find that 84% of them support Mr. Young. Our hypothesis is um, either 80% of all voters do support Mr. Young, which is the null hypothesis, or the alternative being that more than 80% support Mr. Young. So first, let's just do a quick review of using the applet uh, to create a simulated distribution of sample statistics. Let's do one for 100 repetitions, one for 1,000, and one for 10,000. So we go to the one proportion applet. Our proportion of success pi is the value from the null hypothesis, 0.8. Our sample size was 114, and we can, in the number of samples, do the three problems that were asked. We could do 100, we could do 1,000, we could do 10,000. I've displayed here the simulation from 1,000. Remember, you can also change this from number of successes and to proportion of successes. So here I have copied and pasted uh, a distribution of sample statistics with 100 on the left, 100 simulations, simulated sample statistics on the left, 1,000 simulated sample statistics in the middle, and 10,000 simulated sample statistics on the right. Now notice what we're seeing here, um, as usual, is a roughly normally shaped distribution. But you might observe that as we do more and more simulated statistics, as we include more and more, you see that the distribution really starts to look more and more like a normal distribution. Let's just find the p-value for one of these. Since I had entered the distribution of sample statistics with a thousand simulated sample statistics, we can find the simulated p-value for that one. Remember, they said in the problem that when we collected our sample of 100 re 114 registered voters, we found that 84% of them supported the candidate. So in the applet, I can go down to as extreme as, and on proportion of successes, making sure I have that selected, I put 0.84. I count samples that are greater than or equal to 0.84. So it turns those samples red, those that are like my statistic or more extreme, those that are like my statistic or higher. So those that are like 0.84 or higher, and you see them uh, turned red in the distribution. Turns out there are 148 samples out of 1,000 total samples. The p-value is 0.148. That's the p-value from my simulation. If you did this same simulation on your computer, you would get a similar p-value, but slightly different because you'd have a slightly different simulation. Since this is a big p-value, our conclusion would be that the null hypothesis is plausible. In context, this would mean that it's plausible that 80% of all voters will vote for Mr. Young. Part B asks us if we can use a theory-based approach. So instead of using a simulation, would it be appropriate for us to use a theory-based approach? In order to determine that, we need to understand if we've met the validity conditions. And in the case of this categorical data, to meet the validity conditions, we just need to make sure we have more than 10 successes and more than 10 failures, which we definitely do. Since in our sample, we had 114 as a sample size and 84% of the 114 were successes, that must have been 96 people out of 114 people. So 96 out of 114 were successes, and that means that failures would be the remaining. So that would be 114 minus 96, which is 18 people who didn't support the candidate. Notice there's more than 10 successes, more than 10 failures, and therefore we have met the validity conditions. So we can use a theory-based approach. Part C asks us to now use the applet to view the theory-based sampling distribution and find the p-value. So I'm going to go back to that Rossman chance applet, same applet we were in before, the one proportion inference applet. We have the simulation already displayed there. In order to use this applet to find the theory-based approach, which will be a normal distribution, perfectly normal, and it would allow us to find the p-value within that normal distribution, you're going to scroll down, 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 and check this box here that says normal approximation. I check the box, and you'll notice that a normal distribution, perfectly normal distribution, 
appears overlaid on top of your simulation. It also displays that vertical line and gives your statistic 0.84 at the bottom. You'll notice in yellow on the right side of that vertical line is the statistics that are being counted in the normal distribution. It turns out to be the area under the curve to the right of your statistic. And on the left of that, it's blue still. You need to go down to the bottom of the page to see the p-value for your theory-based approach. It says the p-value is 0.1428 with a z-score of 1.07. Your statistic is 1.07 standard deviations above the hypothesized value of the mean. Our p-value is 0.1428. So notice when we did a simulation, I, in my simulation, got a p-value of 0.1480, and if you did the simulation, you might get slightly different p-value because we have slightly different simulations. But when you do the theory-based approach, and I do the theory-based approach, and anyone else does the theory-based approach, we all have exactly the same normal distribution. We all have exactly the same p-value and exactly the same z-score. This is coming from a mathematical formula to create that normal distribution. So there are no differences. It's not like simulation. We should all get exactly the same p-value and z-score. And the only, all you have to do to get it is check this little box down here for normal approximation. For the conclusion, notice, since we met the validity conditions, the conclusion that we draw using our theory-based approach will match up with the conclusion we drew when we did a simulation approach. So you'll notice, again, our p-value is big, it's 0.1428, and our z-score is small, it's only one standard deviation above the hypothesized value of the mean. So since we have a big p-value, we conclude that the null is plausible. So since we met the validity conditions, we have the same conclusion using the theory-based approach or the simulation-based approach. We say that it is plausible that Mr. Young has 80% support.